move was a surprise, but it also didn't come out of nowhere. We are digging deeper now into this week's events leading up to today's announcement. On Tuesday, Multnomah County District Attorney Mike Schmidt announced a grand jury indictment of a Portland police officer now facing an assault charge accused of hitting an independent journalist during a riot while serving on the rapid response team. Yesterday, it was revealed another member was being investigated, this time by the State Department of Justice. Then hours later, just last night, the entire rapid response team voted to resign. Our Jenny Young is live talking to the man heading up the city's independent investigation of the incident that led to the officer's indictment. And that's happening separate from the criminal case. So Jenny, explain to us how that works. That's right, Dan, Liz. So it is separate from the criminal investigation. This is one that is done by the city under the auspice of the city auditor. Now, the man we spoke to leads the team of, of 14 people who investigate any um, any report of alleged officer miscon uh, misconduct. Once they uh, finish their investigation, they pass their findings uh, to the police chief and the mayor, as well as a recommendation for action. I mean, I can't say I'm surprised. I think that this has been kind of lurking as a possibility for quite a while. 50 Portland police officers told the chief of police they will no longer volunteer to work on the bureau's rapid response team. That's the group of officers who work protests, unlawful assemblies, and riots. Obviously, it's a it's a difficult job, and I think when the the protests went on as long as they did, and I think that the way the police handled the protests, um, you know, it it put the officers in a very difficult spot. Ross Caldwell leads the independent police review team under the helm of the city auditor. They're also investigating the incident that led to an officer's indictment earlier this week. The attorney for Terry Jacobs says this video captures the moments officer Corey Budworth pushed her to the ground then struck her with a baton. Budworth is charged with misdemeanor fourth degree assault. PPB's assistant police chief says what happened today with the rapid response team has been a long time coming. The Budworth indictment was just the last straw. As I understand the situation, just having listened to people and, and really heard what they're saying, I think that really this is the culmination of a very long process and it's not just an indictment that caused this to happen. I asked Caldwell what he thinks when he watches the video. I think it's terrible. I, I mean, I think it's very, it's very, very concerning and not, not kind of prejudging where we go with our investigation, but we saw that video and we automatically opened up a case. Regardless of how the Budworth ordeal ends, Caldwell hopes it spurs action that leads to Portland police officers wearing body cameras. So this would all be a lot easier if we had body cameras for police officers. You know, if we've learned anything from the protests, it's that uh, for police accountability to really work effectively, we really need body cameras. The Multnomah County District Attorney Mike Schmidt released a video statement uh, about that indictment this week and Mayor Ted Wheeler, who also serves as the city's police commissioner, released a written statement. Now we have asked both the mayor and uh, the district attorney for on camera interviews so we can ask questions, but they have declined. We will obviously keep trying. Dan Liz, we're going to send it back to you reporting live tonight. Jenny Young, Coin 6 News.